Hi guys, welcome back to Time Machines and Wormholes. I'm CJ, your ultimate travel guide. I'd just like to note that today I'll be starting using my headset just because the audio in the last video wasn't really that great. Anyway, let's jump into it. Today we're doing our first book review. The blog post is already up on my blog. Link is in the description and on my channel page. We're reviewing Ian Mortimer's The Time Traveler's Guide to Medieval England. Now, I really like this book because, um, it's written in a way that not your everyday subjective history book is written. It's written as, as it says in the title, a travel guide. So what that entails is it's basically a walkthrough. A walkthrough um, through the 1300s is the topical period for this book. Um, it is noted in the introduction that for the latter part of the 1300s where some contemporary evidence was scarce, Mortimer did use information from the very early 1400s, which would make sense that, you know, once the 1300s were over, it, things didn't just boom, change. Um, Mortimer shows that he's very knowledgeable and he really, really did his homework, but it's also written in such a way where a casual reader could very much enjoy this book. It's not pandering, it's not assuming that you know anything about history, but it doesn't also assume that you're ignorant of anything. Um, he goes through with his chapters, they're sequential, um, and then each chapter has a segment that goes into more specificity about section of what the topic of the chapter is, which I really like, because um, I'm one of those people I really, really like the more in-depth a history book is, just because I want to feel like I can fully understand the mindset of a person in that time period. Mortimer does this very well. Um, he says that the reason he wrote this as a time traveler's guide, essentially a, a tour guide book, is because the only way that you can fully understand history, the way that, it, that he feels, and I share this um, opinion, the way that history needs to be understood is to get into the mindset of the people who live there. Because you can't understand what's in their hearts and how they perceive the world authentically unless you can get into what their thought process is, how they view their daily life and the world around them. Um, in the first chapter, uh, he guides you through a medieval city in this time period. And as he guides you through the city, he draws your attention to um, the fact that there's no horse poo in the streets in the center of the town where the market is because the servants are sent out to clean it up because the city authorities have told them to do so, to keep the roads clear. Um, he walks you through, um, through the gates into the town square where the market is and the market cross and <coughs> excuse me, there's, you know, the hustle and bustle of, of life going on around you in your mind's eye. And he takes you down, you know, the narrow alleyways, and this is where all the butchers live, and this is where um, all the smiths live and work, and, and the merchants, and the higher class merchants. This is where all the poor people are, and why the streets, or for lack of a better term, just alley tracts, aren't really kept up because nobody sees it. There's no visitors coming into town and wandering down any of the side streets where the poorer, lower class citizens live. So they're not forced to keep up their homes or the roads or anything like that. They have no servants to go out and, and clean off their front stoop. Um, but he does draw your attention to every little detail that the people of this time period, most of them probably would have just walked right by without a second glance because it's just part of their scenery. It's just there. Um, but I, I really like that he does that. Um, and I, I love the way that it's written. It's very knowledgeable. And like I said, it's not pandering or condescending or assuming that you have any type of knowledge of the time period. It's great for a casual reader, but it's also a very nice read for an avid history lover and student of history like I am. Um, I can't express to you how many books on history I have, and most of them, honestly, are on Henry VIII. We'll get to that in a separate video. Um, but anyway, I really do recommend the book. It's a really great, um, it's a refreshing take on a subjective history book. And I do know that Mortimer has written several other books on other time periods in this same fashion. I look forward to acquiring them and reading them and reviewing them for you all um, a little on down the line. Um, so yeah, 
if you guys have any questions, you can always drop me a comment or go to my blog. You can comment there. Um, our next book will be the Penguin Classics version of Geoffrey Chaucer's The Canterbury Tales. It says here that it's translated by Neville Coghill. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, but that's how it's spelled. So we'll be reading that next and reviewing that next. Um, I don't have an established for certain date on when that will be posted, but look for it between next Tuesday, which is July 30th, and next Thursday, which is August 1st. I hope to see you all next time, and I'll see you all on our next trip through space and time.